So, now I would like to discuss the writing process. Basically, whenever you write anything, uh, you may not think of it as such, but you are using some sort of a writing process. Now, when you're writing something fairly casual, the writing process may not be something you put a lot of thought into. Uh, it may not be all that involved. But when you're writing something more complicated, such as an essay or a research paper or something of that sort, uh, you may wish to go through your writing process in a more uh, formalized, methodical way. So, one of the things we want to look at is when you start writing, uh, whatever you write, it doesn't matter. When you write something, uh, you will always have a purpose in mind. Uh, that is to say, what do you want this particular piece of writing to accomplish? And you will also always have an audience. Uh, in less formal types of writing, you may not consciously think of your purpose and audience, but you will have them in mind. Uh, for example, your grandmother sends you a sweater for Christmas, uh, and you need to write a thank you note to your grandmother. If you have thought clearly about your purpose and audience, you're probably not going to write something like, Dear Gran, I got the sweater you sent. Uh, the color is all wrong and it doesn't fit. Um, that's not what you're likely to write. If you do that, your grandmother's going to rewrite her will to leave you out of it. Uh, I know that's what my grandmother was always threatening to do. Uh, what we want to look at is your purpose and audience. Your purpose is not to be brutally honest. Your purpose is to foster this warm, fuzzy family feeling, a show how much your grandmother means to you, that kind of thing. The audience, then, is your grandmother, and you're going to be thinking about what does your grandmother want to hear that will accomplish the purpose of having a warm, fuzzy family feeling. And so, uh, you may say something like, Dear Gran, thank you very much for the sweater. I can tell that you put a lot of time and love into knitting it for me, and it makes me feel so good to have a grandmother like you. Now, your grandmother's going to rewrite the will and give you a bigger share. So when you're thinking about even something very casual, you are thinking about your audience and purpose. Another example of this would be a shopping list. The purpose of a shopping list is to make sure the right stuff comes home from the store. If I am the audience for my own shopping list, then I already know pretty much what I want. So I can just put laundry detergent on there, and when I get to the store, I know the kind of thing I want to look for. On the other hand, if the audience is my husband, and I'm sending him to the store, then I'm going to have to think a little more about what his needs are as the audience. If I just write laundry detergent, he's going to go and buy the cheapest stuff on the aisle. So I have to give him some more details. Uh, laundry detergent, concentrated, liquid, fragrance-free. Now I stand a better chance of getting the stuff I want when he comes home from the store. So when you're writing, think about what you're trying to accomplish, Who's going to read it, and what does that person or those people need? Now, once you have thought about your audience and purpose, the next thing you're going to do is something called pre-writing, which is basically just idea generating. And there are a lot of different pre-writing techniques to use. In fact, I've covered them all. Uh, in a couple of other videos. Uh, but the basic principle behind pre-writing is it's a way to get those ideas flowing. Um, if you're having trouble getting started, if you're kind of stuck, um, if you're experiencing writer's block, um, go and check out the pre-writing techniques because those are going to help you to overcome whatever that's got you stuck and get the ideas flowing again. Now, 
once you've done the pre-writing, then you come around to doing the actual writing itself, which is also known as drafting. Uh, and basically, if you've done some really good pre-writing, the drafting step is pretty much going to happen all by itself. Uh, because the techniques you use in pre-writing, you will already have thought a whole lot about what you want to say and how you want to say it. So good drafting uh, comes from good pre-writing. Uh, it, it really does make things easier. Now, once you have drafted something, we then come to the step called review. Review basically just means somebody looks over the writing and sees what's working well, where it might need improvement, things like that. And there are a lot of different ways that you can review your writing. The first review is ideally yourself. After you've done writing, and hopefully you have not procrastinated, you let the writing sit for a while. Uh, ideally overnight, if not longer, and then come back to the writing when it is not fresh in your mind. And what happens is you look through your writing and you'll say some things like, oh, I thought I was clearer on that point, or wait a minute, I thought I had put that in, but I see I didn't. So that's why you let the work set aside and cool off. Um, so that, because what happens is if you read this thing right after you've written it, you know what you meant to put in, and your brain is going to pretend it's there even if it's not. So set the work aside, come back to it later, and review it. Another form of review that you may be asked to do in your classes is what's called peer review. Peer review is where you bring your work in to a small group of your classmates, and they look it over, and also, can look and see what's working, what's not working. Um, and this is another valuable type of review because even if you have let your work sit aside for a while, you may still remember what you intended to put in. But having a couple more sets of eyes, a couple more brains going through that writing, uh, they may say, wait a minute, something seems to be missing here. Um, or this sentence is a little confusing. Can you clarify what you meant at that point? Another value of peer review is no two people have exactly the same experiences, uh, the same life outlooks. You have different backgrounds, different ages, sometimes even from different countries. And so having one of your classmates, or more, usually more, of your classmates uh, look over what you've said, uh, they may bring a different point of view. And you might say, oh, I hadn't thought of it that way before. Thank you. So peer review is a really valuable technique uh, for getting more thoughts on it. Another form of review that happens is when you turn your paper into your instructor. Your instructor will look at the paper and again, see what's working well and what are the areas where you might want to improve it. And so you'll get recommendations from your instructor as well. Some other types of review you might use uh, Take it to some friends or family. Um, if you have somebody in your family who's good at this kind of thing, and by the way, they don't even have to be good at English. Uh, they just have to be good at looking and seeing whether your reasoning is clear, uh, things like that, whether something's missing. It doesn't have to be an English person at all. Um, but have them look it over. See if there's something they can point out that you might want to add or change. Another form of review is going to tutors in the tutoring center. Um, typically, tutors don't want to be working on fixing grammar. That's kind of dull. Uh, they've told me they really like being in on some of the more creative things. So you may come to the tutors with your paper and say, I can't get this paragraph to work right. Can you help me on developing it? That kind of thing. Have something specific you want to work with the tutors on, uh, but the tutors can then uh, help you to build your essay.